A photointerrupter is a type of optoelectronic device that uses light to measure proximity. They're commonly used in machine design for measuring uh, location of objects or movement in a non-contact way. They're quite low cost and very versatile. We're going to look in particular at the LTH-1550, which I supplied in your, uh, in your overall course kit. They weren't part of the ELGU package. They're supplied separately because they're very useful devices. So the device itself is in the middle of this breadboard. If I can zoom in a little bit, it's, hard to, it's so small it's actually hard to tell, but what there, are, what there is is in one common package, there is a infrared LED that can emit light and an infrared phototransistor, which can detect infrared light. So in, normal, in the normal unconstrained mode, the light simply dissipates out into the world and nothing is received. But if an object is brought close, light is reflected back into the phototransistor and that can be detected. I'm going to go now to a, an exercise on the course website, which has a basic circuit for testing the device. So the first image is drawn from the data sheet for the device, and it gives you a couple of elements to look at. First is, you can see that there are two devices in the package, an LED and a phototransistor. A phototransistor looks like a transistor, only instead of having a base connection, there's an arrow indicating that light acts as the base. So here's a device where it's the light that causes the transistor to conduct. Effectively, we're going to use it kind of like a switch or a linear uh, varying, varying resistance, um, which signal depends upon the light impinging on it. The thing to note here is that the package is very small and very symmetric, and the only indication is that there's a very small notch in one corner. That, that's on the LED end. And uh, the other thing to note is if you look more closely at the device, I have a hand drawing here. Um, the LED is a little more clear and the phototransistor is a little more dark. The notch is on the LED end. This is the way you have to orient it properly when you use it in a breadboard circuit. Um, the thing to note in general here is that the, there's two resistors involved. There's a, a, a ballast resistor for the LED to limit the current through the LED. This is essential to avoid burning it out. Um, which, and we can typically run these off 5 volts. And then there's a, there's a bias resistor for the transistor. It's considerably higher value. Here I have it drawn at 22K, although in testing here I'm using a 10K resistor from the kit. There's some latitude in what kind of resistor you use there. But the idea is the resistance of the phototransistor is fairly high, and so we need a, to, make it, to build a bridge that has a meaningful uh, range of, of change of the voltage output we need to have a, a match resistor that's also kind of at this sort of 10 to 50K kind of range. So please note these resistors are, you can use the 220 from your kit and a 10K from your kit, that should work fine. The other thing to note is that effectively the, the grounds are on opposite corners. The emitter, I'm sorry, the emitter of the uh, NPN phototransistor is tied to ground and the cathode of the LED is tied to ground. Those are on the diagonal corners. That's just a way to help check your wiring to make sure you've gotten it wired in properly. And then this arrow on the right is basically the output that will wire to an Arduino. So we can see on the breadboard where how the circuit looks. Uh, we have a resistor here, which is a 220 ohm resistor from the LED anode to the POS5 rail. That's the ballast resistor on the LED. And on the opposite corner here, we have a 10K pull-up resistor between the transistor collector and the POS5 rail. And that's the bias resistor for the phototransistor side of things. And then this yellow wire is leading back to the, the Arduino A0 input. That's our signal that we're going to read. Let's go ahead and look now at the, uh, at the signal using the Arduino. We're going to use a kind of basic uh, sketch from the course site called Read Analog Voltage. It just prints out a voltage. So if I go ahead and uh, upload that to my Arduino and I um, check the serial monitor, Bring that back, we can see that we're getting a voltage reading of 4.62. And while we're looking at this, I'm just going to bring my finger close. We see that it drops down to about 2.5. So we're not getting the full range of 5 volts input, but we're getting a meaningful signal. Um, I can switch now to using the serial plotter. I'm printing out only one number per line. So if I use the serial plotter, then I can get a graph of this as a function of time. So uh, here I have my serial plotter. And as I bring my finger close, we can see that I'm causing the signal to vary. Let's get another look at that. I'm going to try to show these two at the same time now. So as my finger is, uh, I don't know, maybe an inch away, I'm not getting much change. As I get kind of close, you can see that voltage dropping. Light is being reflected in the transistor. It's conducting. It's pulling that signal low, and so the voltage goes down. If I get very close, I can get a kind of range. And if I tap it, my finger moving in and out causes some kind of oscillation. If you really, uh, it's possible actually to get to actually have something that seals the cover here with a really tight connection and actually get no output, my finger apparently has enough infrared transmission through my actual skin that light is still going through my finger into the phototransistor, and that works even very close. The basic note is, 
it only works over relatively short distances. It's, it's useful for measuring like a, an object right in front of it or a mechanical flag moving past or a slotted disk or some other kind of mechanical feature within you know, maybe a centimeter or two or three, but not much more than that. It's a very short range device. They are very fast. They can measure signals on the order of, I mean, it's limited more about the mechanical device you put in front of it. The phototransistors themselves are typically rated for uh, changes as fast on the order of microseconds. Um, so these things could measure a very, very fast mechanical uh, change in front of them if you had some kind of vibrating device or, or um, a kind of slotted wheel turning at a very high rate. So they're useful in this context for, uh, you know, kind of measuring some kind of mechanical system or perhaps a kind of user interface. And I think the key is, is location, figuring out where to place them such that the reflection is off of something that makes a difference that you can then get a meaningful measurement.